Hey, welcome back to the channel. Got something a little different. Um, I did a quick video on um, using Vue.js with Ion Slides, and I saw similar questions being asked regarding React, so I figured I'd uh, do a video on that. So I laid out the basic um, app right here, um, Excited Code Sandbox, which is an awesome tool. If you've never used it before, strongly encourage you to check it out. You can do your Ionic React and also your Ionic Vue stuff in here. Before we get started, please make sure you click the like and subscribe button below. So, as I said, we have the basic um, Ion Slides uh, with underscores with Swiper.js application here. We're going to add some buttons to navigate back and forth, and then we're going to get access to the actual Swiper component um, to be able to de disable the buttons and enable the buttons um, by figuring out if we're on the first slide or the last slide. So, um, let's hop to it. So the, the first thing we are going to do here is I, let's let's get the buttons in place. Um, we're going to create a div and inside the div we're going to place a previous button and a back button and we're going to use the ion button components to get this all set up. These buttons will be, as I said, they'll be the triggers to move the slides forward and to move the slides backwards and they will also be disabled based on which slide you're on. If you're on the first slide, we will disable previous and if you're on the last slide, we will disable next. Um, most of this is basic um, React code. I'm going to put the styles in line as opposed to putting them somewhere else. I just find it easier. Once again, I like how nice um, uh, Code Sandbox has the IntelliSets in there so you can get all of the um, right properties, attributes, and values uh, for you. One thing I just like is you gotta kinda refresh often. So I got my buttons in place and they're working fine. And so the next thing is to um, move on to um, putting the uh, reference. So we wanna get the reference to the Ionic Slides component. I've seen some people who are doing, you know, a document, get element by ID or get element by name. I mean, this is the preferred React way to do it. You can use a new hook called useRef. Um, I set it up as null initially, and then, um, so I set up my const, and then you can see here on my Ionic slide, I actually have assigned the reference to it, so I will be able to get access to that component. And then from that, I can get access to the actual swiper object that's on it, which has all the great functions that we want to access. So let's set up a on button click function that we're going to call when you click on one of the functions. Uh, when you click on one of the functions. When you click on one of the buttons, this is an asynchronous call. I remember that because the get swiper call is an asynchronous call. So, um, because what we're going to do inside the on click is we're going to get the swiper object using the reference, and then we're going to call a function to move, go forward or backwards, or previous or next. So, um, let's set up the function on the on the um, on click handler, and then we're going to call on button click. We are going to pass the direction in as a string previous. Let's copy and paste this. And for my next button. So we set up our next button. And they should call our functions. And there you see we have a direct. Well, I could go with the switch or I could go with the if. I think I'm going to just keep it simple and go with an if statement. So. Um, First, let's get the actual component. So what we do is we get my reference and then um, get swiper. No, that's complaining. I forgot we are we're using the ref, so I have to actually do current. So that gets me the actual object that I want. And then now I have swiper. Ignore the squiggly line. It just means I'm not using it yet. And so now I'm checking the direction. So if direction is next, then what we want to do is we want to call the swiper ABI function. I'll show you the list of them at the end and I'll include the link below. And the function we want is line next. And then if the direction is previous, the function that we're going to use is, I believe it's slide previous or slide prev or something like that. Um, let me check my notes okay so now we are have the buttons which are actually controlling the swiper which is what we wanted we got access to the paper object let me put a nice little comment on top here excuse my fingers 
they kind of separate the code. All right, so now we have our buttons, which are getting the object and moving back and forth. So the next thing to do is we're gonna show we can listen to an event. So we're gonna listen to the on slide. On ion slide did change. And uh, what we're gonna do is on the slide did change. There's a bunch of different things you can do, but uh, for now, all we're gonna do is we're gonna identify what our current index is. And if our index is the first slide, then we're going to disable the previous button. And if our index is the last slide, which we'll determine by getting the lengths of slides, we will disable the next button. We're going to handle all this in one function, and that function is called um, handle slide change. How we're going to do this is we're going to have um, two properties inside of my component. Uh, component one called disabled prev button for disabled previous button, and one called disabled next button. We're going to use the React hooked hook or React hooked the React hook that you state. For the disable previous button, we want it to start out as true because we want we know we're going to start on index zero, so we're going to set the default value for that to be true. And for disable next button, um, we will set default value to false. These guys got their little squiggly lines because they haven't been imported yet and because they're not being used yet. So now um, we will utilize these two on our actual button. So we'll set the disabled um, attribute on the ionic button, ion button. We'll set, uh, we will set the disabled attribute on the ion button using the properties that we just created. And this should be pretty straightforward. Disable previous. Let's copy this to minimize my pasting. And um, I'm sorry, not minimize pasting, minimize typing. And our next button. Okay, so now we're set in the actual render function. So now let's make sure this is all compiling appropriately. And you can see my previous button is disabled at start, which is what we wanted, and my next button is not. Okay, now let's uh, get the appropriate code that we need inside our um, handle slide to change. Um, gonna be very similar to the previous one. We are going to get our swiper object um, using the uh, ref that we created. So let's just copy and paste it, minimize some more typing, set this guy to async so we can call the wait inside. So as uh, in the previous example, you can see we should have the swiper component that we're looking for. And um, we need to call the set functions. So what we're gonna check here is if the swiper active index is equal to zero, then we know we're at the beginning. So we can disable it. We don't need that semicolon inside. Let's put the semicolon on the outside. And then for the next one, we are going to set disable next button. If my um, slides length is equal to, actually this is backward, let's do it the other way around. So slides length minus one, because remember this is zero base index. And then if the swiper active index, so that should be what we are looking for. Let's give this a go, see what we get. Next it's disabled. And now let's go back, go back, and previous is disabled. So that's awesome. Got a quick look at uh, the Swiper APIs, um, which is what we, the whole reason we created the ref, <coughs> the ref was to get access to the APIs here. Um, and as I said, I'll include the link in the bottom below so that you can see so you can hop in and get here to yourself, and as you, we click and go to methods and properties, you can see there's the slide next and the slide previous. I didn't do anything with the speed or run callbacks. You can dig deeper into that if it's something you're interested in. Um, and then up here you have the specific prep properties that we're pulling. So I, as you saw, I pulled the active index. But also, it's interesting, you know, we did the calculation for is beginning, is end. Let's just do one last little um, edit and refactor out. We're not going to do the calculation ourselves. We're just going to get the values directly from the swiper component. So let's change this to the swiper is beginning. And the, what's the other one? Swiper is end. So let's put that, get that out of there. And swiper is end. Paste it in there and let her rip and see what we get. So refresh and it looks like we're, well, I hate, sometimes you gotta do this with the code zen box, you gotta refresh a couple of times. So it looks like we're getting the exact behavior that we want. Um, you know, once again, just a quick video to show you this. Wanted to show some love to React. It had been a while since I had done anything with React. 
Um, please make sure you like and subscribe. If you'd like to see me, if you'd like to see me, some more React JS content, please uh, leave a comment below. Um, for those who follow the channel, I do a fair bit of React and fair bit of View. I like to go back and forth between the two, but you know, let me know what you'd like to see. Um, thanks again, and take care. Bye.